construction of the border wall, and she stopped the Remain in Mexico policy that had kept a lot of Americans safe. Now, today we're going to talk to a lot of Americans who have suffered and had children and loved ones who have died because of these border policies. It has led to record fentanyl overdoses in our country. It's led to a lot of migrant crime from people who shouldn't even be here. And it's, of course, driven up the price of housing for a lot of Americans who shouldn't have to compete with 20 million illegal aliens for scarce homes. Uh, obviously, uh, the big news of the day is that Tim Waltz has been nominated as the VP, or is, is now the presumptive nominee, I should say, uh, for Kamala Harris. My view on it is it just highlights how radical Kamala Harris is. This is a person who listened to the Hamas wing of her own party and selecting a nominee. This is a guy who's proposed shipping more manufacturing jobs to China, who wants to make the American people more reliant on garbage ener energy instead of good American energy, and has proposed defunding the police just as Kamala Harris does. Uh, I think it's interesting, actually, they, they make an interesting tag team because, of course, Tim Waltz allowed rioters to burn down Minneapolis in the summer of 2020, and then the few who got caught, Kamala Harris helped bail them out of jail. So uh, it, it is more instructive for what it says about Kamala Harris that she doesn't care about the border, she doesn't care about crime, she doesn't care about American energy, and most importantly, she doesn't care about the Americans who have been made to suffer under those policies. I'll take a couple questions, then we're going to hit the road and so go to this press conference. Yeah. Anti-Semitism. The reason why you believe Kamala Harris didn't choose Josh and Eric is still that. Well, it's not what I believe. It's what the Democratic leadership has said. Um, many, many people said repeatedly that the reason Kamala Harris was going away from the Josh Shapiro selection is because they were worried about anti-Semitism. They were worried about certain voters. They were worried about some of the, the leaders and the grassroots activists in their party wouldn't take a Jewish nominee. I think it's despicable. I think it's disgusting. But that is right out of the words of many members of the Democratic leadership. And so now we have Tim Waltz. But again, most importantly, we have Kamala Harris. Her policies have been a disaster, and they will remain so if the American people give her a promotion. Senator, Senator, there, oh, Senator yeah. have you or Governor Walls reached out to one another? I know when you were just yeah. going to be. You guys have reached out. You um, I actually, on the way to the flight in um, in Cincinnati, I guess in northern Kentucky, uh, I actually called Tim Waltz. I left a voicemail. I didn't get him. But I, I just said, look, congratulations. Look forward to a robust conversation and enjoy the ride. And uh, maybe he'll call me back. Maybe he won't. Yeah. Uh, gov uh, Senator, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. The uh, governor and Vice President Harris are expected to take a battleground state tour in the next couple of days. Sure. Uh, former President Trump will be making a public campaign appearance until Friday in Montana. Is that a missed opportunity? No, look, I think, I think I'm making a number of public uh, appearances over the next few days just to drive home the fact that Kamala Harris's policy has been such a failure for normal Americans. I know the president is very busy over the next few days. One of the things you've got to do is, of course, get out there and speak to people and speak to reporters. Uh, a final thing that you have to do, of course, is raise the resources. And I know the president's very busy uh, doing exactly that. So he and I are, are taking a divide and conquer strategy to this campaign. Sometimes we obviously do events together, but I think we're going to use the fact that we have two people who can both get out there and prosecute a message. Uh, we're going to hit the road. But I really want to make just one final observation. I, you know, I, I know most of you, I like all of you as, as people, or at least I like the ones of you that I know. I think that you guys have got to do a better job at actually forcing Kamala Harris to answer questions. This is a person who's been the presumptive Democrat nominee for 16 days. She hasn't taken a single real question from a reporter. The American people deserve to get to know the people who want to lead them. And I think it's shameful for Kamala Harris, but increasingly for the media, that she's taking a basement strategy of running from reporters instead of getting in front of them, answering tough questions about her record and letting the American people know who she is. President Trump and I take hostile questions. We take non-hostile questions. We get out there and talk to people because we respect the American people enough to want to persuade them and not to try to run from them. So I think you guys got to do a better job. That's my humble opinion. Well, thank, thank you, take guys. It easy, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.